All right. We're live. What are we at? 129th episode of the Unplugged Alpha. This is a podcast series built on the book. One episode at a time, as I like to say. Um, one of the <clears throat> chapters in my book is talking about genuine burning desire. So today's episode, guys have asked about how to maintain this over the long term, especially when they're taking on critical things like marriage or long-term relationships, living in a way that looks like marriage to the government is risky. So how do I maintain genuine burning desire over the long term is the question we're going to try to deal with here. There's a lot of points, a few things to unpack, so get your pen and paper ready or save this to a favorite playlist because you're want to come up because you're going to want to you're going to want to come back to reference it later on. Um, all right, let's get started with the show. First things first, do all the things for the algorithm. Thumbs up on the YouTube video. That helps me out a ton. If you're watching this elsewhere on the interwebs, come over to the YouTubes and subscribe there. We're also on Rumble as well now, so you guys can watch the show there too. Everybody's been saying, got to go to Rumble. I'm on Rumble. There you go. How's that? How does that make you feel? Good? Good. <laughs> All right. Let's get started. Good morning. We've got Jerry Wellberger in the chat. What's up, guys? Let's do this. All right. So the first thing that you got to understand is it, it, it starts with a choosing process, right? Like when you get rolling with a, a chick. Um, the mistake that guys will make is they will have very little experience. The first girl that touches her PP, they're going to want to marry or get into a long-term relationship with. And that's not the way to do things. This is how you get wrecked, right? You don't have experience. You don't know what women respond to. You don't know uh, good from bad. You don't know how to spot red flags. Um, these are all the basics. I'm assuming most of you have gotten past the basics. You've, you've, uh, you've read the Unplugged Alpha. You've, I mean, even if you haven't, you can, you can get the uh, free chapter on um, the red flags, I'll put it up on the screen below. Just go to entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash red dash flags, get on the email list, and you can download the free chapter on the red flags. The basic vetting stuff. Very, very important beyond that is you're gonna choose a woman that chooses you. You shouldn't be doing the choosing for the relationship. You shouldn't be the one that goes, hey, where do we stand? Where is this going? I really like you. You know, Are you seeing anybody else? That's a dork move. That's what... That's what guys with very limited options or no options do when it comes to getting involved with a woman on a long-term basis is they don't have any options. It's, it's the one girl that they're dealing with or talking to, and uh, she's probably entertaining other options, if we're being honest, and then they corner her one day and say, hey, you know, like, what are we? And I've said this many times before, and nerds of the internet will always say the same thing. They'll protest and say, no, it's the man's job to ask for the relationship. No, the man should be saying, you know, where do we stand? Shut up. My show, I do the talking, pay attention and listen, and you're going to come out of this with some knowledge, okay? You don't ask for the relationship. Why would you ask for the relationship if you have options? You won't. A woman's going to corner you and ask you what's going on, where do we stand, where is this going? That's what you do. If it comes within the first three months, that's a bit too early, it should come within about three to six months. Beyond six months, a little bit too late. You know, in that range is generally, generally the uh, sweet spot. She's seen you enough. She's seen your lifestyle. She knows what you do for a living, what kind of bank you make. Uh, she knows stuff about you. What time you get up, what time you go to sleep, what your hobbies are. She's met probably or seen a few of your friends, at least on social media, maybe even met them in real life. She knows that you're captivating. You're an interesting guy. So she's now saying, hey, where do we stand? You know, I really like this guy, Rich, and I want to know where it's going. And are we exclusive? What, you know, what's happening here sort of thing. Again, you're choosing a woman that chooses you. You always, 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 always only ever want to choose a chick that's chosen you. How do you know she's chosen you? Because she asks you for the commitment. She asks you for the relationship. She asks you to go beyond dating, right? Make sense? Good. Here's the thing, though. You have to be higher value than her. That's very important. You have to be higher value than her. She has to look up to you. She's not gonna. She's not gonna see you as her hypergamous best if she's looking at you. She has to look up to you. She wants to be with a giant. I've said this many, many times. 
She wants to be with a guy that's of a higher caliber than her, not of the same caliber, gen and also not of a lower caliber. Women will again protest and say, but Rich, you're wrong. My husband stays at home and raises the kids, and I climb the corporate ladder and make $200,000 a year. Fine. Congratulations. Some women do put themselves in that scenario. They're generally not happy, or they're generally not that attractive, and it's something they kind of had to re resign themselves to or lower their standards to. Okay, But it is the exception rather than the rule. Exceptions don't disprove the rule. You want to be higher value than her. Now, everything that I've got here on this list that we're going to cover, and we should have plenty of time for Q&A today, the link to call in is uh, pinned at the top of uh, the YouTube live chat, so you can, uh, you can find it there if you want to ask me a question during the show. So everything here below that I'm going to talk about, the main points that I've made, all fall under the category, it's very simple, of being attractive and not being unattractive. If you're attractive to a woman and you are also staying away from things that make you unattractive, it's a lot easier to maintain genuine burning desire. I'm not going to define GBD. I'm going to use the acronym during the show to sort of speed it up a little bit. Defining GBD is unnecessary. It's a chapter in the book. The book is less than like 15, 16 bucks. Just get the damn book on Amazon, The Unplugged Alpha. Once you've read it and you've got your value out of it, leave a review on Amazon, let other men know what you got out of it and pass the book on to a friend. Be attractive, don't be unattractive. So, what motivates a gal to stay with a guy? Interesting question. What motivates women to stay with a guy? One of the main things that keeps a girl glued to a guy, it's kind of stupid, but I'm going to say it, it's providing future value. Uh, it, this goes back to Brefault's law, right? So, Robert Brefault was a... Uh, here, let me pull up his Wikipedia page because I want to make sure I get the definition correct for all the uh, critics. So Robert Refault was a French surgeon. Um, here he is. Social anthropologist, novelist, blah, blah, blah. He was a geek that studied um, behavior. And in the animal kingdom, uh, he defined it this, this, this corollary, which was called, you know, Berfault's law, and it says the female, not the male, determines the, con sorry, the female, not the male, determines the animal conditions, sorry, the conditions of the animal family, where the female can derive no benefit from association with the male, no association takes place. Simple, straightforward, and easily understood. All that means is, that doesn't matter how many nice things you've done for her, how many trips you've taken her on, how many meals you've paid for. The, the food that was in her stomach that you fed her with last night is now in the toilet today. She has forgotten about it. It is just a reality of female behavior, female nature. It's, what, uh, it's, it's a feature, not a bug. Let's put it that way. If women weren't receiving future benefits from a man, why would she have stayed with that man a thousand years ago? If he's unable to feed her, to protect her, uh, to give her children, you know, to raise the children, to provide value to the children, you know, that she uh, has with him, why would she stay with him? So you have to understand one of the basics when it comes to uh, attraction and keeping her around on a long-term basis is there has to be future benefit to her. And you can't lean on your past laurels. It can't be like, oh, you know, I took you on this trip or I took you on that trip. Or, Remember that restaurant I took you to two months ago? She's forgotten. It doesn't matter. And you, there's no point in even bringing it up. None whatsoever. It's, it's the future value that keeps women around. Your consistent ability to deliver what a man is supposed to deliver, okay, as it's expected in a relationship. We're not going to do the, oh, well, what's expected out of women on, on this show? That, you know, we'll save that for another time. We're talking about, again, maintaining GBD in a long-term relationship or a marriage because these are difficult things for men. Marriage especially is hostile. You take on the risk of a marriage in a Western world and shit can get very difficult for you. A woman can alienate you from your kids. She can use them as a bargaining chip to get more money out of you. Uh, there's alimony, there's child support. All of these things are very expensive. There's the division of assets, the matrimonial home and all these things. And quite often, because you know women are hypergamous, they marry up, they're going to the more successful, wealthier, richer, more influential guy, and his stuff goes to her if she wants to untie the knot. 
So if you want to have a family and children and all that sort of great stuff that guys often ask me about, pay attention. Okay, you have to be able to provide future benefit. For false law, you can look it up, read the Wikipedia page if that confuses you. Let's move on. You have to be on a purpose. You have to be doing something with your life. There's nothing that turns off women more than a guy that just sort of goes with the flow. A guy that just does whatever, you know, he's always done and doesn't look for any kind of improvement. Simple example. You're a corporate guy. You work at big name company, Fortune 500 business, blah, blah, blah. Are you getting promoted? Are you getting raises every year? She's looking for that. If you're not, that's going to start to disappoint her, believe it or not. If you're not maintaining bare minimum and growing, whoops, and growing, then you're heading in the wrong direction. Head in the right direction, upwards, upwards and onwards, being on a purpose. Are you putting a little dent in the universe, a big dent, any dent in the universe? Are you doing something of some significance in your life that matters, that she can be proud of, that she can tell her friends about, that when it, when it comes up, it's known? Like Nothing's better than your reputation preceding you. Richard Cooper. Girl is with Richard Cooper. Her friends find out about Richard Cooper. That's interesting. He's got these, 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 and other things. They start Googling your name, blah, 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 all the companies he's run, the awards he's received. You see what I'm saying? You have to be on some kind of a grind. You have to be on some kind of a purpose. It doesn't matter what it is, what line of work you're in, what you do. Even if you're the greeter at Walmart, next year you need to move up to the senior greeter at Walmart. You catch what I'm saying? Do you understand the drift? being on some kind of a purpose, going upwards and onwards. Understanding what women respond to. This is all things that I've covered many, many times. Again, stuff that's in my book, that's in many of my other podcasts and discussions that I've had. I am not going to go and define everything to specifics, but understanding and acting accordingly to what women respond positively to. Let's give you an example. You have a bad day at work and your boss is being a total asshole. What are you going to do? Are you going to go home and bitch to your wife that things aren't going well, that he's creating constraints, he's asking you to run reports that he never looks at, blah, 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 and whinge and fill her ear with bullshit for the next 25 minutes? Or do you shut the fuck up and keep it to yourself and chop it up with your boys? and ask for feedback from your board of advisors, like you know your solid inner circle. You understand what I'm saying? Women respond positively to a man that just gets it, that can solve problems. She doesn't want to deal with your problems. I've said this before. Women don't care about your struggles. They hang out at the finish line, and they pick the winners. Be the winner. Be on that path towards winning. Always, as much as possible in life, win. Okay? So there's that. I'm going to kind of breeze over the next one a little bit lightly because it's a somewhat sensitive topic, but you have to properly F her. Do you understand? If things aren't working in the bedroom, things aren't going to work on a long-term basis in the relationship. She should have genuine desire for you in the bedroom throughout the term of the relationship. When things lighten up in that area and things aren't happening in there, very often or at all, maybe for a few months at a time, things are not going well for you. She is potentially looking elsewhere. She is potentially wandering. If you're not performing, if you're not able to perform, any of those things are going to be problematic. There's a lot of good resources and material out there on the interwebs. Um, there's a book called The Sex God Method, which kind of breaks down the fundamental basics that you generally need to understand if you're newer to performing in the bedroom. But you have to properly effort on a long-term basis. Now, look, if she's chosen you and she's done the where do we stand talk and she's enthusiastic about you from the get-go, I'm guessing you probably already know what you're doing. You have to keep doing what you're already doing. As you get older, guys, you're going to run into problems with cardiovascular health. Your arteries will start to clog because of dietary issues. Sugars can cause issues, all these other things in your diet. And you generally don't maintain perfect weight in your 20s as you do in your 40s and 50s, for example. You're going to have to maintain those things for yourself. 
One of the other notes I made over here is not getting fat and looking healthy and being, you know, in a strong condition. If you're going to perform in the bedroom, you got to have good nitric oxide balances in your blood. Um, you've got to exercise, uh, getting your, you know, getting your heart rate into like that specific zone over uh, long state steady, steady cardio um, is incredibly important for heart health and uh, everything working properly downstairs, if you know what I'm saying. Again, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on it because this is, you know, on platforms that don't appreciate the deep discussions on that. But make sure you understand that and maintain it. Okay. <laughs> You got to have some witty fun banter with her. Hey, babe, make sure you call the city and get a uh, handicap parking pass. Oh, why? What do I need one for? Because by the time I'm done with you tonight, you're going to need one because you're going to have a hard time walking from a far parking spot to where you got to go at work or to the grocery store. You're playful with it. You understand what I'm saying, guys? You understand? Good. Let's move on. Let's talk about standards. Um, so a lot of guys, when they get married, they're like, oh, if I get married... Uh, I'll have easy access to uh, wonderful sex in a perpetuity. She'll love me in a perpetuity, all that stuff. The whole sickness and health till death do us part and richer and poor and like all of those better or worse, like richer and poorer, for example. Richer, yes, she's always going to be happy with. Poor, no, she's not going to be happy with. I don't give a fuck what the vows are that you take what religion you subscribe to. It is not a buffer or a protection or an insurance policy against her wanting to leave you. It's always got to be better, richer uh, in sickness and health, healthier, not sickness. Maintain your health, right? All of these things matter. Maintaining and improving standards as time goes on. And by the way, it's not for her. It's for you at the end of the day. The, the direct beneficiary for you maintaining standards and continuing to do the work to improve have a direct benefit to you as the guy. If she's going to turn psycho or something goes sideways with her, again, women always refuse or, or sorry, women always reserve the right to change her mind later on down the road and things go sideways. If you're a better guy at 40 than what you were at 30, then you can hit the road running and Start spinning plates immediately. You've got no problems. If you've let yourself go, you become fat, you become very complacent in your job, you've lost skills, you're not that interesting, you lose friends, you don't, you know, you don't you know, continue to hang out with friends, you're going to be less interesting. Maintaining the standards really, really matters. Let's talk about shit tests because this kind of gets into betatization as well too, right? Shit tests are... Something that's going to be thrown at you all the time. Always. Always, 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 always. And it's a competency test. She wants to know that you're a capable man. What's a shit test? Um, lawnmower doesn't work. Can you fix it? Snowblower's jammed. Can you fix it? These are kind of manly tasks. Changing a flat tire on a car. Is that something that you can handle if you're with the family going down the road? You get a flat, you pull over. Is she the one changing it? I've had ladies on the Ladies Night podcast whose fathers taught them how to change tires when they were teens. And they go out on a date with a guy or they're dating a guy. He gets a flat tire. He doesn't know what to fucking do. So she changes the tire for him. Done. The relationship is over at that point. It's completely finished. This is a shit test. It's, you know, it's a competency test. It's, it, it's a test of skill and fortitude that men must pass. Now, there's going to be times where she's going to throw some bullshit tests at you, right? Like, do this, and it's just some random bullshit. You just don't do it. If, if it's random, completely obscure, not necessary, uh, not aligned with the other things that we've talked about in prior, then you keep doing what you were going to do anyway, right? You just have to set those boundaries, maintain the boundaries with her. Um, let's talk about frame and maintaining the relationship as a component of being attractive and not being unattractive, right? Um, frame is defined. So let's use a picture frame, okay? You take a picture, you frame it. That's frame, okay? If she's adding herself to your frame, for example, so... Um, 
you've got a house, she has a house. You have a house in a nicer neighborhood, better property, more acreage, whatever the fuck it happens to be. It just happens to be, you know, cat's meow. And she's got some regular place. Frame would be her moving into your home, not you moving into her home. If you're in a situation where she's got the nicer crib, the greater acreage, the nicer layout, the bigger property, all that sort of stuff, and you move into her house, you're entering her frame, okay? Frame is really important in a relationship, it needs to be established early on in the relationship, and your frame needs to be the dominant frame in the relationship. A guy with a dominant frame in a relationship will say, we're going out for dinner Thursday night, be at my house at five, and wear that little black dress that I like. And then you take her out for dinner, you have a good time, you pay for dinner, you take her home, and you do your thing. That's frame. She's not making the reservations. She's not telling you what to wear. She's not setting the time. You've done it all. You've taken care of everything. That's what women want. And I hate to tell the guys that like to get lazy or think that, oh, well, that's too much work. You know, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Um, all you're getting is uh, sloppy seconds or second hands or whatever the hell it happens to be. My dudes, my man, that is the reality of the world that we live in. So choose women wisely. You know, you should be, again, at the entry point, not choosing a highly promiscuous woman with a disgusting past. You should not be choosing a woman with, you know, the 21 red flags that I talk about in the chapter of my book. You should be choosing women of good moral character so that if you're going to invest all of this sort of stuff in a chick and you're going to maintain attraction and not be unattractive or any of these other things we're talking about, you, it's like there's some payoff for it, right? And if it doesn't work out with her, whatever. You hit the road running, next, right? Because that's what top shelf men do. So we talked about maintaining frame and leading the relationship. What do you want to eat? Well, I don't know. What do you want to eat? Well, I, I don't know. You know, we had this, so why don't we have that? So what do you want to eat? Going back and forth and doing that, it's, it's just retarded, guys. Don't, don't do any of that stuff. You got to lead the relationship. You're going to set plans for vacations. You're going to set plans for holidays. You're going to, there's certain things you're going to offload to her that aren't important or are of trivial, you know, insignificance. But the vast majority of the big decisions need to, need to happen within your frame. Relationships aren't equal partnerships. This stupid word that people are using today in large volumes, my partner, oh, here's my partner, Becky, or here's my partner, Rich, you know, for example. Fuck that shit. You're not partners. You're not equal. You're not running a law firm. There's nothing the same about men and women, okay? Law firms call people at tiers partners, right? At certain levels, right? You've got your partnerships. You've got your associates and stuff like that. They have equal share. They have equal standing, different standing, you know, in different areas. But in long-term relationships and marriages, they're referred to as your girlfriend, your wife, whatever it happens to be. Define the sex, the gender. I see these Reddit posts all the time, and I often, you know, share some of these on uh, Twitter. They get sent to me, you know, when they're trending. And sometimes you read them, and it's like, they or my partner. And it's like, you have no fucking idea. Is it a man or a woman? You just don't know. Because people want to use these binary terms that just blanket everything. Define, she's my chick, she's my woman, she's my girlfriend, she's my wife. Whatever the, ha whatever the hell it happens to be, lead the relationship. And correct her language if she ever introduces you as partner. You know, you're at an event or something like that, and she's like, oh, here's my partner, Rich. Take her aside and be like, don't ever embarrass me like that again and call me your partner. I'm your boyfriend, whatever the hell it happens to be, whatever you've defined it you know, to be at that time your date, whatever it is. Uh, but you, but leading the relationship is going to take work. I'm going to say this again. I've said it many times before. Being in a long-term relationship is more work than dating or just spinning plates. So if you're going to take on a long-term relationship and dating, again, do it with somebody that you've properly vetted, that has already chosen you, that has asked for the relationship. You see what I'm saying? So lead, lead. Um, next thing, become the unplugged alpha, not the plugged in beta dork. 
become that guy that other women want to be with and other men want to be. The men that just get it. Not every guy is a natural. In fact, most guys are not naturals. There's four categories of men. Um, unplugged alphas, plugged in alphas, unplugged betas, plugged in betas. Four categories. Make sense? Okay. There's very, very few natural unplugged alphas. Most guys ascend to that point through work because of trauma, because they were sell sold a bill of sale, a bunch of bullshit through their life that they believed. And then they started using it in a relationship and then they discover it doesn't work. And then they have trauma and then they go looking for answers and they find them. So become that top shelf men that again, women want to be with and men want to be. Um, when you go to a restaurant and by the way, guys, this isn't flirting with the waitress. This is the waitress flirting with you. That's what happens with unplugged alphas. Okay. Um, some guys will try to create competition anxiety in a woman by flirting with attractive women as they sort of go about things. That's one way to do it. Not the best way, if we're being honest, because she can see right through it. But if the attractive woman, the waitress, the receptionist, wherever you happen to be, naturally flirts with you as you maintain your standard demeanor and behavior, she's going to pick up on that. She's going to see it. That's part of leading the relationship. That's part of being the unplugged alpha. That's the attractive man that you know she wants to be with. That's what that is. It's not complex. It's not complex. Um, we already talked about choosing the right woman. Staying in shape, let's spend a little bit of time on that. A lot of guys, as they enter a long-term relationship, are generally in pretty good shape. Um, I remember I was at the gym once, and um, you know, I got out of the shower, I get my toiletry bag, go to the, uh, the sink, and I start shaving my head. And there's this guy who's got one of these uh, tattoos around his arm, the barbed wire ones. These were popular when I was a kid. A kid, when I say 20s, roughly. Guys would go out and get the barbed wire wrapped around their arm, and that was like cool at the time. So he's around the same age as me. He's holding on to scraps at this time, and he's got not a lot of hair left over as I'm shaving my head, and he looks over and he goes, that, looks, that actually looks pretty good. I wish I could do that. And I said, well, what's stopping you from it? Oh, my wife won't let me, right? With this like broken down, old horse fucking look with his blurred out, you know, barbed wire tattoo, probably from when he was cool and lean and strong. And there he is, a former shell of himself, shaped like a pear, got a belly, narrow shoulders, holding on to scraps with his faded out barbed wire ass tattoo, probably when he was cool in his 20s, right? Staying in shape and looking the part matters. Having a look matters. Your look will change as you get older. The look that I have today is very different from the look that I had when I was in my 20s. I had lots of hair in my 20s. Today I don't, so I just shave the head, grow a nice beard, and that's it. Staying in shape matters. Um, beyond just staying in shape, and it, it's not complicated. Actually, if we're being honest, I think guys have um, a form of something that I called years ago, which is known as bigorexia. Uh, when it comes to weight training and working out and sort of stuff. And I think men have this ideal that's higher than what women like. Like we'll look at um, photographs of Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was an um, you know, Olympian in the 70s. We'll see Jay Cutler, Dorian Yates, like these big fucking dudes. And we're like, that guy looks awesome. I want to be that big, right? Truth of the matter is, is that's way up here and that's not what women like. Women like more of the swimmer's body. Just broad shoulders, narrow waist, some pecs, some good mus muscle definition in your shoulders and your arms, a little bit of abs, nice quads and calves. It's it, 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 like the, the minimum is not as high as you think it is. Guys put it way up here because they look at like Arnold Schwarzenegger and you're like, I want to look like that dude. I was the same guy when I was in my 20s. That's not what's very attractive women actually. It's just something more like a swimmer's you know, physique. So it's not as much work as you think it is. If I'm being honest, just don't be fat. Again, be attractive. Don't be unattractive.
Let's talk about hybristophilia. So hybristophilia is women's attraction to men that have the capacity for violence. Um, this only exists in women, by the way. I always get challenged on this when I bring it up on a ladies' night podcast. We're doing those Monday nights at 8 o'clock with Moff. Um, oh, but, you know, men are like that too. No, they're not. Men are not like that at all. There's loads and loads of nerds that are in jail. Uh, we can take um, uh, even even as recent as like some of these like uh, incel guys that will shoot up a school or rent a van and drive over people. Uh, they have no luck with the ladies out in public, but when they go and commit a violent crime like that and they end up in jail, all of a sudden now they're getting mail, they're getting letters from women, they're getting marriage proposals, they're getting women that want um, conjugal visits, they're getting panties in the mail, and they're shocked when they start to receive this stuff. So the notion of hybristophilia has been around for a long, long time. Women like a violent man. They prefer a man with a capacity for violence, uh, you know, speak softly, carry a big stick sort of thing. Um, it's one of the benefits and byproducts that fighters come to realize eventually. Um, and also another benefit for you going to a dojo and learning how to fight. Uh, learning how to fight, I did boxing for three and a half years practically. Um, probably some of the best cardio workouts I've ever had. Uh, I was definitely the leanest then. I, I mean, you can go look at my Instagram. There's some photographs there, um, you know, with a deuce paid sort of uh, story playlist because uh, my trainer used to take a photograph at the end of each uh, workout. Um, you will get lean. You will be strong. You will have competency skills. And a benefit, a byproduct of that is if you know how to fight and throw hands, that turns women on. You having the ability to defend her and the family and be violent is exceptionally attractive. Um, I encourage all men. It's one of the things that I'll even talk to the guys in my community about. Right? There's, there's dudes that'll show up in good shape, and it's like, cool, but can you throw hands? Well, no, I've never, I've never fought before. I've never, nobody's ever bothered me because I'm, because I'm a big guy. Well, that's cool being, you know, looking that that part. But if you don't know how to use it, what's the point in having it? What's the point? There's really just no point in having it. Um, that dawned on me a few years ago, early forties. I'm like, got all this muscle. I've been training for all this time. I can pick up heavy shit, put it down. I can press three plates, you know, all, all this stuff. But I didn't know how to fight, like throw hands properly. I, I didn't have any technique. So it doesn't matter if you do, you know, you want to roll Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you want to box, you want to kickbox. It doesn't matter what it happens to be. It's my advice to guys out there to have fight skills and to continue to train with fight skills. Um, I haven't quit learning uh, fighting techniques. I got real good at boxing. I had a fight. I won it. Um, guy was younger than me, taller than me, and heavier than me. I talk about it in my book, in the updated version, in the second edition. Um, I brought people to the fight to hold me accountable to winning. I didn't want to uh, play not to lose. I wanted to play to win with that fight. And um, I did. It's attractive. Learn how to fight. It's a great workout. It's a useful skill. If the shit ever hits the fan, you can use it. Uh, if you have kids, it sets a very strong uh, and dominant standard. Um, you want a woman to look up to you. A, a woman's not going to have a hard time looking up to a man that can fight, that can fuck somebody up, that has strength, that has power, uh, that has uh, courage as well. Um, women hate cowards, you know, more than anything. So we've talked about hybristophilia. Phenomenon that's always existed, you know, whenever you hear about these fucking psychos, you know, these killers, these murderers, and them getting love notes in the mail from women is just phenomenal. Like convict, like convicted killers. The guy methodically does a, B, C, D commits a crime. People die as a consequence. They get tried and go to jail. Women now send their panties to them. <laughs> this is in female nature. Um, another thing I talked about in my book is women's search history when it comes to um, eroticism. And 
they found out that women like uh, vampires, werewolves, surgeons, uh, billionaires, and what was the other one? Pirates as well. These are their fantasies. Not the Walmart greeter, not the corporate guy that works for the Fortune 500 company, uh, not the chiropractor, not the accountant. These are all guys that have the capacity for violence. Again, um, this is why women liked uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, the best-selling book of all time in history ever. It's a book about a guy that has a dominant lifestyle that he enforces on a submissive woman with all these random fucking toys and shit along the way. We're not going to get into those details because you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, let's talk about betatization. Avoiding betatization as much as possible. So betatization is part of the shit testing that we talked about earlier. Um, women will test your competency. It's not a question of if. It's a question of when. It's not also a question of whether or not you will go through betatization as a man in a long-term relationship or a marriage. It's to what extent. All men, regardless of the fucking frame that they have, uh, how unplugged they are, how much of a great fighter. Like, I've seen MMA fighters. There's, there's world-class soccer players, athletes, um, amazing at their craft. Stadiums full of people. Yeah, they buy jerseys with the fucking name of the du of some other dude, and they wear a jersey with the name of another man on their back. Men want to be these guys, but they will go and do something retarded, like marry a woman that's fifteen years older than than them, or get involved with a gal that's a single mom with three kids from three different fathers, right? even though they're a world-class MMA fighter, even though they're an athlete that, you know, doing something phenomenal, wonderful with their life. Um, you will go through betatization as a guy. Make good choices. Um, there's going to be certain times where these shit tests will come up and it's just like, I don't know, like let's say, um, let's say you got a flat tire. You know how to change a flat tire. Um, and one of the lug nuts is like rusted solid on the uh, wheel. You're having a hard time getting it off. And she's standing there behind you. Oh, what's the matter? You don't know how to change a tire. My dad knows how to change a tire. Why are you, why are you having a hard time? Do we got to call CA, CAA? Do we got to call my dad for help? Woman, get in the car. Sit down and be quiet and watch the kids. Okay? Um, that's how you pass a shit test. And then you figure it out. You create extra leverage with the bar so that you get a little more torque out of it. You figure it out. You take care of it. That's what's required of you as a guy. Um, she's, she's going to test you. She's going to try to put you in a position. And they don't do it because they want you to be unattractive. They don't do it because they want you to be ugly to them. They don't do it for those reasons. They just do it because it's in them. Because evolutionary speaking, women have to know that they're with the best that they can get. And that's all a shit test is. What are you, some kind of moron you can't change a tire? Becky's husband can change a tire. Why can't you change a tire? Why are you having a hard time with that lug nut? Why is it stuck? Woman, be quiet. Get in the car. I got this. That's it. That's how you pass a shit test. It's just part of their testing that is going to happen. You're going to be dealing with that in a long-term relationship. Oh, but Rich, that's too much. The juice is not worth the squeeze, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't. Why are you in the relationship to begin with? Why did you take on a relationship to begin with? Knowing the things that I talk about, right? Why? Pay attention to these things. Betatization. Let me tell you another story. Um, I'll never forget this. So, I built a custom home years ago. We're having a backyard event. Um, family's over, kids' birthdays, you know, running around, barbecue, family, blah, blah, blah. Two doors over, this is before fences went up and stuff were going on, you know. The builder hadn't quite finished it just yet. Two doors over, quite a ways away because the yards were wide. You hear this woman yelling at her husband, they had a small family event going on, and she's yelling at her husband, Brad, why can't you help me with the baby? What's the matter with you? You're totally useless, blah, 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 blah. Keep, keep in mind, 
this is in front of their family over there. And then two doors over, there's my event with what's going on over here. And they're all within earshot. And this woman disparages him in front of all of these people. Now, I guarantee that wasn't the first time. And I guarantee it won't be the last time. And every time that things like that happen, her interest, her genuine desire in him, which she might have had early on in the early days when he was a tough guy in his 20s and he had the barbed wire tattoo and he was muscular and he took care of himself, you know, he looked good and he had some style when she was strongly attracted to him slowly over time because he allows certain behaviors and language and, uh, you know, these disparaging statements, shit testing him. He allows them, he permits them, will continue. You will get out of life what you tolerate. You need to be able to put your foot down if she ever tries to shit test you and beta tie you in front of families like that, you know, with a statement such as, what's the matter with you? You're such a moron. Why can't you help me with the butter? You've got to, you've got to stop that. You got to stop that shit as soon as it happens. Not necessarily in front of everybody else. The conversation needs to be had. Don't ever talk to me like that in front of my family. That is a line in the sand. You draw the line in the sand. Okay, let's talk about bottom lines. A bottom line, you draw a bottom line in the sand. You point at it and say, this is my bottom line. If you cross this line, I am going to know that you don't want to be with me anymore and we're done. Aim her face at it. See it? This is the bottom line. You've made it very clear. You've drawn that line in the damn sand. She crosses that line, there has to be consequences. I told you, Becky, you don't talk to me like this. If you have a problem, we'll deal with it. You need to be respectful. This is disrespectful. That passed my bottom line. Now, you're in a long-term relationship now. You got kids. You're kind of fucked. How do you turn back the clock on that? It's something you got to deal with early on as soon as it happens the first time, right? You're driving and you... You know, you're going somewhere and the, the ways or the GPS doesn't work and you get lost or some shit. Well, what's the matter with you? You can't find where we're going. Hardy, hardy, her, her. Woman, be quiet. I got this. We're getting to where we're going. Chill. Beatization. Oh, and the last thing is I know that a lot of guys, um, and I've done this before too, a lot of guys will uh, quote a lot of red pill stuff, right? Um, stuff out of my book, out of other guys, you know, from the Mano Swamp, some pickup artist course that they might have picked up, Amuse Mastery, you know, negging. Uh, they might quote some of the aspects that they've learned that are effective that women respond positively to. Don't do that. They don't want to, they don't want, the game to describe to them as you play it. They just want to be a participant in it. They want to be a recipient of the benefits of a strong masculine virtuous male that's leading a relationship properly. Do you understand? They don't want to understand how the game works. They don't want to hear you describe how the game works as you sort of go through the game. Well, the reason why I did this is to induce competition anxiety in you so that you would have uh, more desire for me. And it's like, don't. Don't tell her what you're doing, why you're doing it. Don't explain it to her. They don't want to know. And to be honest with you, even if you try to explain it to them in simple and concise terms, they don't even really fucking understand anyway. A lot of these chicks from the Mano Swamp, um, the pearls of the world and stuff like that, they'll say a lot of the things that have been discussed amongst men as we're swapping notes, but they don't fully fucking understand the mechanics behind it. They just know that, Oh, people respond when that's said, so I'm going to say this to my thirsty simp audience and they're going to get it as well. Don't explain the game to women. Just play the game, okay? They don't want to know the rules. They don't want to know the strategies. They don't want to see you put it on a whiteboard where circles and X's and arrows like fucking, you know, they do with football and stuff like that. Just play the game. Be the game. That's the other thing too is you don't, you should get to the point where you're not studying game. You're not uh, like reading about it on a consistent long-term basis. Do refreshers. Like every once in a while, I'll grab an old audiobook that I got on my Audible list. Like I listened to the Evolution of Desire 
I don't know, four or five years ago. I pulled it up in the last month and I listened to it again. And there's a bunch of, you know, bookmarks, you know, things that I pulled up, a few other things that I pulled out of it that I might have missed the first time or forgotten about it. That's fine. But don't explain the steps to her. You don't you don't break it down, right? You just when a chick buys a house with a guy, or he buys a house and she moves in it, sort of thing. But when a house is being built and there's um steps that are being taken to build it and the foundations being laid and you know are we going to use uh wood struts or metal ones or what kind of drywall where are we going to see it? like they just want the finished product they just want the beauty of the finished product they don't want to know how it's built same thing with cars guys like i mean i do anyway but a lot of guys will study cars uh engine displacement compression ratios are the valves solid state are they sodium filled what kind of valve springs are they titanium are they still like you know, we'll study all the details. Women don't fucking care. They want to push a button that starts it, put it in D for go, and press the gas pedal and go somewhere. They don't really care about how it's all orchestrated. It's the same thing with relationships. She just wants the benefits of being led by a strong, virtuous male that just fucking gets it, that doesn't need to explain things to her along the way. Because even if you try to explain things to her, there's zero benefit whatsoever. She just not going to care and it's for the most part if i'm being honest going to be interpreted the wrong way he's manipulative he's deceiving oh what if he's you know he says these things what if he's banging other chicks on the side and it's like you know it just gets out of hand again she just wants to be a participant going along from the ride benefiting from it you know the future benefits and all the other things with a fucking a chat you know like a stud that actually gets it see what i'm saying all right, so let's do this. Uh, let me get these super chats in just one second. Um, going to go to the Q&A segment. We've got some time for a bunch of questions. If you have a question, the link to call in and ask said question is live uh, in the YouTube chat. So again, uh, join me on YouTube here. I'll put the link and then you'll find the StreamYard link there to hop in. Let me get these super chats real quick. Um, genuine burning desire is just like an erection. If it exists, you'll notice it. You have to be the man for this to exist. Faking it won't cut it. Yeah, absolutely, Dragos. You cannot fake GBD. Um, it's like taking a frying pan to the forehead. Okay. Um, let me let me bust out uh, it's chapter ten in the book. What GBD looks like because I define it here real quick. Uh, determine your interest. Genuine burning desire. A woman that truly desires you, you will know it. She'll show up on time, call or text you without making the first attempt. She'll respond quickly, willingly enter your frame, be a compliment to your life without wanting to be the focus of it. She'll ask you questions to get to know you better. She'll also buy you random gifts. She'll make you meals, follow you closely on social media. She'll even message you first on dating apps, always responding very quickly. She'll show up for dates with makeup and nice clothes and shoes and hair done, and she'll enthusiastically do everything you like in the bedroom. She will often initiate intimacy with you unprovoked. When a woman has genuine burning desire, it will be as obvious as taking a blow from a frying pan to the forehead. A little excerpt from the book. If you haven't got the book, guys, it's on Amazon. The Unplugged Alpha. Make sure you get the second edition. It's the most updated one, the best one to get. Jerry says, probably the number one thing I've learned from you, Live uh, Rich and Live By, is you get what you tolerate. Absolutely, my dude. You, you tolerate shitty behavior from people and you let them do it the problem isn't with them it is with you you have to fuck it again like i said draw the line in the sand aim their face at it this cannot i will not allow this this is disrespectful i'm not having it they cross that line they get the warning maybe two warnings it's a soft next there has to be a hard next at some point get the fuck out i warned you you didn't listen out okay you get a life and God, by the way, that just doesn't work with women. That works with men and business transaction, business partnerships. It works everywhere in life. Uh, friends, how do you deal with a woman who asks about moving in together? Well, if you don't want to move in together, then you just tell her, I don't want to do that right now. Um, women will ask for more as time goes on. You're dating. 
She wants more. Where do we stand? I want your commitment. I want to claim you. I don't want to share you with anybody else. Okay, you look at her. She doesn't have a lot of red flags. You're okay with that. You've chosen monogamy, so you choose her. Okay, so now you've moved from dating to we're a thing. Now that you're a thing, she's going to move to let's have a talk. Um, what do you think about living together? Right? Okay, well, that's when you can decide how it is that you want to live. I, and personally know a lot of guys as well, choose the path of together but living apart. Um, lawyers are really smart at navigating family law in hostile places. And I've talked to several lawyers in Canada and the U.S. now. And they follow the model of together but living apart. Um, it's only soft, weak beta males that will just yield to it, like automatic. Oh, okay, so let's just live together. Not knowing what the fuck they're getting in, into, not knowing how common law is going to affect their life and their assets and their wealth and other things later on down the road, not knowing that uh, desire tends to tank over time with women. So one of the big differences between men and women is on a, a scale, like if you have an axis over here with desire being over here and time on the bottom, desire goes down for both of us, okay, over time. Desire for women goes down more quickly. It's more like a hockey stick. It's down and then kind of like this. Whereas for men, it's more steady state. So if desire for women goes down quicker than it does for a man, living together is going to accelerate the desire that she has for you. She knows where you are at all times. You guys live together. Familiarity breeds contempt. You want to have a good long-term relationship with a chick. You do need some distance. One of my great friends who I travel with in circles in business groups, um, he's been married, I think 25, 27 years. It's over 25 years now, let's say. <clears throat> he ran a, uh, a business for the vast majority of that. He just, he just basically retired a few years ago and sold his interest in it. Uh, but he ran a business for decades, uh, actually two he had one that failed, went bankrupt, and he had to start all over again, do it again under a different uh, brand and name. And one of the things he claims that kept his relationship strong because they had clearly defined roles, blue jobs, pink jobs. It's something else I didn't really talk about. I've mentioned it before, but clearly defined masculine roles, feminine roles. Do man shit, woman do woman shit. Don't blur those lines. Don't get her to change tires on fucking cars. Well, I'll go do the dishes, babe, but the snow tires need to go on the vehicles, so can you take care of that in the garage? That's not how shit works. Blue jobs, pink jobs, you understand? So there's that. But also, he had to travel a lot because of the business that he was running. So he was in Asia, he was in many parts of the States, Europe, trade conferences and all this shit. So he'd be home about half the month. And the absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's a true story. You move in with a chick, there's less absence. The heart grows less fond of the other pe person. I don't think there's many people out there watching this, and you guys can, you know, s tell me your story in the comments, that will say, oh yeah, we became, you know, we had more intimacy when we, when we moved in together. The level of intimacy increased dramatically when we moved in together. We fought less when we moved in together, right? She shit tested me less when we moved in together. That's not how it works. So to Franz's question over here, how do you deal with a woman that asks about moving in together? I dig your vibe. I really like you. That's not something that I'm totally opposed to, but let's put that off for a little bit, okay? And you just put it off, simple as that. If you're a younger guy and you wanna have a family sort of thing, I think for the most part, it's probably better to raise the kids together. Like. Children will do better with both parents around, obviously, right? So there's going to be that slight exception. But if you've got the kids out of the way, you're older, you know, you're at the point where it's like there's no real benefit. You don't need like her. I have a house cleaner. I don't need a chick to come and clean my house. Um, I have money. I can go out to nice restaurants, whatever. You know what I mean? Like I don't need a chick to live with me to cook for me. It's a nice benefit. But again, you know, you can be together living apart and still have her cook nice meals. You can go over to her place. She can bring the stuff over to your place, cook it over there, right? Um, yeah, there's, there's a few videos that I've done. There's one video on the Entrepreneurs and Cars channel. You can go look it up. Um, 
And it, I just talk about why I think it's better to live apart than it is together. Um, there's more upside to it. The problem is a lot of guys are, you know, and gals too, you know, they're in a space where it's like they're living paycheck to paycheck. They got debt, maybe student loans. They got a car loan and a lease. She's got her place. You got your place. And then she's like, hey, what if we live together? You know, we can save some money. And the guy's like, well, okay, George, let's live together and save some money. And then, you know, she'll get rid of her condo or sell it or maybe even rent it out if she owns it or some shit and then move into your place. And then it comes with all the extra layers of complexity that I talked about earlier on, right? You can love a woman and not live with her, believe it or not. And a woman will be okay. She's going to she's gonna push. I mean, she's going to want to live with you, especially if you're successful and high value. Well, we got to move to the next step because everybody else is living together. And why don't I get to live together? Am I going to call you my boyfriend for the rest of my life? Why aren't we living together sort of thing? And it's like, babe, I love you. It's not something that I'm totally opposed to. But why would you want to change something that's working real well? A really good argument that you can use is, do me a favor, take a look around at everybody you know that lives together, you know, your parents, your brothers, your cousins, all these other people that we've met, your friends, you've been dating her for a while, right? Like it's usually not within the first few months or six months, a chick's going to be like, hey, let's live together or have the, why don't we live together talk? It's going to be down the road. You've met her family, you've gone to Thanksgiving and Christmases and stuff like that, whatever holidays, and you've met everybody and you know that you know, what's going on in their lives. You just say, look, you know, take a look around at everybody that you know that lives together or lives like they're married or in common law. And you tell me who's happy all of the time, whose relationship has improved as they've done that. This is where women will struggle. They'll be like, uh, I don't have an answer for that because it doesn't exist. It very, very few cases exist where men and women living together are like, oh yeah, it's way better now than it was when we were living, when we were together but living apart, right? 50% <laughs> of marriages end in divorce. That doesn't account for the cowards that stay married, that don't get divorced, that are living miserably. There's only 3% after eight years of people that live in a state of bliss where they're like, this is the best thing ever. It's very, very rare. And also men and women's sexual strategies compete against one another, right? Like. We have different wants and needs from women. Women have different wants and needs from men. They want security. That's why they ask to live with you. It's very rarely that guys will go to a gal and be like, hey, you know, so uh, we've been together for a year. Do you think we should maybe live together? It's not that often that guys do it. It's usually women that prompt that conversation first because of the security metric, right? They know when they're living with you, they get that extra level of security. They want that extra level of security and protection to some degree, especially if you're a competent man, hyperstrophilia, you know how to fight, you can beat the shit out of intruders, kind of stuff like that. But that's why they're you know polling for it. So just set that boundary, man, you know? All right. Um, okay, we got caught up on all the Super Chats. We got some call-ins. Again, the link to call-in is above in the live chat of YouTube. I'm gonna run the uh, ad reel for like a minute and a half. We'll come back and do the Q&A. So I'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll wanna use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You wanna make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. And I use Tactical Soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical Soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness, 
to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. All right. Guys, again, um, that ad reel covers everything that I'm associated with. I don't take on corporate sponsorships with the big bullshit that you see with some other people. Um, this is all my stuff. So my supplement line, theunpluggedalpha.com, the book, the website, if you need private coaching, all that stuff, go to richcooper.ca. Uh, let's connect. You know, it helps support the show. Uh, I wanted to throw up a quick chat here on the screen before I take these call-ins. Uh, Chelsea over here said, my grandpa used to address my grandma as woman. Let's bring that back. Using the term woman isn't a disparaging term. I think a lot of people today would get offended by it. I think it is absolutely fine when you're being tested or she's trying to shit test you or she might be acting out in a certain way. Woman, cool your jets. Boom, right sort of thing. It's not, it's not a disparaging term. It, it's, it's certainly okay. Uh, let's grab Jose over here first and, uh, we'll get through as many calls as we can. You're muted. Just, yeah, there you go. How you doing? Good and you? Good. What do you got for me today, man? Um, just letting you know, uh, well, first of all, that uh, thank you for all that you're doing. It's, uh, it's really amazing, man. Um, look, I'm 33 years old. Um, I am with this woman, uh, for 14 years now. Uh, we have two kids, a uh, great family dynamic. But um, I know that I am an exception because, uh, well, I'm going to be really, really honest. I'm a short man. I am a 1 meter 40. And, uh, well, I won't say that uh, I've been lucky in life, but it's almost that, you know. So uh, I've been living with a BPD mom. And, uh, well, it was, it was really difficult. Your wife difficult. has borderline personality disorder? No, no my, mom, my mom, my mom. Your mother did, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I grew up, I always I always said to myself, I, you know what, when I'm going to have a, an LTR, uh, a wife, whatever, um, I'm not going to um, let her uh, rule. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, so yeah. The for, so I always put my, my foot down. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much, man. I mean, I, mean, I, I know guys that are good-looking, uh, they uh, are not disabled, uh, and uh, they they struggle. They struggle very much. You know, they they act like really like betas. And sometimes, you know, they they come to me, and they they ask me for advice. I'm like, hey, Jose, how did you do it, man? Like, you have a wonderful family, uh, besides all your uh, visible limitations, and uh, you made it, man. So, what's the what's your so what's secret? The secret. Well. Uh, put your put your foot down, man. Put your foot For down. Real. Set some boundaries, yeah. right? Yeah, correct. I mean, um, you know, sometimes not not that it's hard, but in the education of the children, it can be hard because we have this perception that she's the she's one the one who's gonna be more nurturing with the with the children, mm -hmm. especially uh, when they're young. Because uh, my two daughters are five and two years old, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes I'm like, ah, you know what? I'm going to let her deal with it. But sometimes I see that she's struggling. It, it's kind of normal, you know. Uh, kids can be really, really rough sometimes. You know, all the tantrums. And, you know, put your foot down. And even with the five-year-old, uh, my five-year-old five five -year -old daughter, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, I put my foot down. I'm not, I'm not going to negotiate with you. So yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't negotiate with children. Why, do you, why would you negotiate with irrational behavior from a woman, right? Correct, correct. So that's the way I, I see it. And um, look, I'm, I'm pretty happy. You know, I have, uh, I have my family, I uh, have my, my career. Um, damn, it's, life is good, man. To be honest, life is good. good, I, good. I, I, love, I love listening to you because uh, I grew up with my mom. And uh, how, do I, how can I explain? Like my father wasn't, wasn't living with us. And, uh, you know, when you, had, when you don't have a masculine um, presence at home, mm -hmm. it can be hard sometimes, you know, to, uh, to be a man eventually. But when I listen to guys like you, uh, it helps me to, you know, just to correct the path. Because, you know, 
uh, all the messages we receive from the from the society. I live in Montreal, man, so you know how it is here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and uh, you, you listen to it, and I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna listen to to Rich, uh, to uh, Andrew Tate, but I, I I like you very much because you uh, you don't you don't only you don't only uh, say um, you you say things uh, and how to um, how can I say? Sorry, man, English is not my first language, uh, but the way you say it is you give um how would you say it in you, spanish you have you, you you give practical practical uh, advice that's consejos practicos yes okay good 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 yeah correct yeah, that's a good share did you have a question for me too or was so it just that an experience helps. to share my experience and uh cool. keep it up man it's uh right. it's something Thanks, good brother. you do for the community thank you all right, let's. Uh, John's got a question for me here. I see in the chat. John, how you doing, buddy? Hey, good. How are you doing, Rich? Good. What do you got for me today? Good. Uh, so, apologize in advance if it's a little long winded. Um, but so, I had a question about, I guess, when you're dating a girl. It says LTR in the chat, but it could be a girl you're dating as well. Mm. But uh, so, let's say you're dating a girl and you're doing everything on your end. You're captivating. You're uh, by you know paying for everything. You're taking her out on dates. Yeah. Uh, you're doing your side, so everything's great and everything. But on her end, let's say she's, uh, you know, the three, the three pillars. Let's say she is very respectful. She's feminine. She's doing everything great. Uh, she's also screwing your brains out. Great, mm -hmm. awesome. So what if the third pillar? She's not very useful to you. Like for example, uh, say she's not really. Uh, how should I say? She's not offering to maybe do your laundry, uh, fix your lunches or anything. Mm -hmm. So she's kind of slacking in that end. Um, the question is, how would you go about bringing up maybe her part saying, hey, you know, I'm doing all this. I'm paying for everything. So it's like, uh, you know, it, it, these things aren't cheap. Uh, I'm doing all this. But, you know, it would be nice if you would, uh, you know, maybe do my laundry or it's not good. And we don't need her. To, obviously, you know, we're men. We should be doing this on our own. So we don't need her to do all this, but she's not, say, offering to do that part. How would you go about, I guess, bringing it up? Or if you even would bring it up, would you yeah. just lead by example? No, that's what, a great how question. would you go? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the, hey, you know, I've been buying you dinner sort of thing. So why don't right. why you okay. do my laundry? Because that's like negotiating. She mm -hmm. knows that you've taken her out and bought her a nice meal. She knows that you've taken her on trips and, and entertained her and done some captivating shit, right? I'll yes. Just, I'll just put it over here because I just minimized it because you're uh, you're off camera. Um, Sorry for my camera. No, no, don't don't sweat it. So, so the thing with the whole um, ha having her be useful in your life, which is really important. Like we want a gal that's going to compliment us. That kind of starts early on, and and I have a small test that I use um, early on, and it's you know I called it the score McFlurry test in the summertime. I was driving my car. I put this video on Entrepreneurs and Cars. It was a hot day. Um, I got a bit of a sweet tooth, so Score McFlurry is a tasty treat for me. So if she's heading over, then I would have her perform a small task, like detouring somewhere, going through a drive through picking up something that costs five bucks, like it's cheap, and then bringing it over to me pleasantly with a smile on her face. Now, if she did all of that with enthusiasm, right, and presented it with a smile, then she's passed the test. But if she starts protesting, oh, I don't do things like that, you know, why would I pick that up? For, that's not good for you. Or, you know, she does it, but she presents it, you know, she kind of slams on the table and says, don't ask me to do that again, or it gives you like attitude. Then that's behavior that you have to correct. Like if you test that early on when you're dating, like the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth date, or, you know, something like that, then that's an easy point in time to sort of start correcting that behavior. It's also going to establish whether or not she's the kind of gal that's like a feminist because the problem with toxic feminism is it teaches women to never do anything for the express pleasure or benefit of a man. So if you want a man, sorry, if you want a woman to be in your life and to compliment your life as time goes on, then she has to pass something simple like the score McFlurry test. It can be a bottle of wine. It can be a Americano from Starbucks or something like that. Whatever it is you know, that you happen to like, that's a slight detour is going to cost her a couple of bucks and, you know, force her to do something for your express benefit or pleasure. That's that's all that that is. Been dating this girl for how long now? Uh, for about maybe a month and a half. 
Okay, so it's still early. So yeah, it's it's very early. Yeah, yeah so I'm just like yeah. You could sure. definitely do something like the score McFlurry test. Just you know, pick whatever it happens to be for you. It might be picking up your dry cleaning. It might be a coffee again. You know, a treat. Whatever it happens, something small. Nothing that's going to cost a hundred bucks. Bottle of wine, you know, fifteen bucks. You know, something like that. You know, for the night. Hey, you know, I got dinner ready, so you know, just pick up a bottle of wine. You know, something simple. That's all that that test okay. is, and it and it gets her used to doing things for you. The interesting thing is. I don't think women fall in love with a man when we do things for them. Women fall in love with a man when they do things for us, when they're serving us, when there's a benefit to us. So when it comes to something like the laundry, you know, for example, um, how would I execute that? Let me just see. I would just say, look, babe, uh, I got a lot going on today. Before you go at 11, like let's say it's 9 o'clock in the morning, you know, before you go at 11 for your thing, do me a solid and, you know, put a load of laundry in for me, right? Yeah. That's it. And then just walk yeah. away. And don't negotiate it. Don't wait for her reaction. <laughs> don't uh, don't talk about it. Just Or you're downstairs and she's in the next room, right? And then just yeah. carry on and just let her do it. And she'll oh, either yeah. do it or she won't do it. Or she won't. Mm-hmm. So if you have to instruct her to do this kind of stuff over and over again, and it's like, you know that you're setting yourself up for a life with a chick that really doesn't want to be useful in your life. Right. Yeah. Again, most women today are are drunk on some version of toxic feminism. I believe all women are a feminist to some degree. It's just to what degree? It's just like how men will go through betatization. It's not a question of if we're going to go through through betatization. It's to what degree we will be betatized by a woman. So all women have some degree of feminism in them. You just have to determine what it is as early on as possible. And one of the things that feminism tells women to not do is anything for the express pleasure of a man, right? Now she's already doing all the good stuff in the bedroom. She's respectful. So it shouldn't be too far of a fetch to be like, Hey, um, I got dinner ready tonight. Do me a solid, go to the liquor store and pick up this bottle of wine for us on the way over or whatever the treat happens to be. It's just a slight detour. It's a slight instruction that she has to follow. That's all that that is. And then that'll get her comfortable with the notion that she's serving John. Okay. Right. Yeah. Great. I have a lot of hope for this girl. You know, she is conservative. So I think she doesn't uh, buy into that whole feminist idea. She does talk about, you know, gender roles. She yeah. says that all the time. So I, it does look promising. I was just wondering if, uh, yeah, in case I find that, damn, she's not, she's not pulling her slack on this end. I was yeah, like, but, uh, yeah. Like some of the stories that come to mind. So one of my friends is in the chat right now and, you know, he works, uh, you know, he's a hardworking man and, uh, you know, the story that he told me was that um, his gal will always have his lunch ready for him, like when he has to go to work, right? It's not a question that mm-hmm. like, he doesn't ask her to make it. It's just ready for him, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. it's quality food. Like, these are the sorts of things that a useful woman will do in your life, right? And it has to be in a perpetuity, you know, by the way. So a lot of the times women will do these things early on to sort of like uh, capture your attention and your interest in them with, that, with, yeah. with them or to commit to them sort of thing. If they start to get lazy over time, remember the things that got them in the door, they need to keep doing as time goes on. We're, like we as men are expected to become better over time, right? Like we have right. to continue to chase excellence, climb the corporate ladder, get raises, mm-hmm. make more money, be more captivating, yep. have a better social... We have to do all of this shit for women. And all, all that we're asking them to do in return <laughs> is just maintain a fucking standard. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. if you did this in year <laughs> one and two, keep doing it. Keep year doing three it. And four and five, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So when you see them get lazy or slower or less responsive or they'll walk past the pile of laundry when in the past they would do it, it's totally fine to be like, hey, babe, you know, One of the reasons why I chose you when you came to me and said, where do we stand was because you were the kind of girl that would unprompted take a load of laundry and run it through the machine to save me the hassle to free up my time because I'm working on, you know, insert dent in the universe. Yeah. And it's it's kind of like you got to man up and say it. You know, I think a lot of men out there are just too afraid of, you know, losing the girl. Just just man the fuck up and and just tell her like, hey, this is I have the standard. I'm living up to the standard, obviously that you want because you're still with me. So how about we, we stay, we stay this, uh, this yeah. path Let's and, keep going. And before we wrap up, there's this notion of pride. Women will let pride get in the way of certain things, especially things that they might deem as like uh, low value tasks, right? Like doing mm-hmm. laundry or picking up your score McFlurry, like on our way over sort of thing. But if she's done it early on, 
And then she relaxes because of pride over time. Like, why should I be doing his laundry for him, right? Uh, it's like, look, lady, like take your pride and put it in your back pocket. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to state bitch you're replaceable, but you have to make choices and behave in such a way that she understands that she can't get comfortable and that she can be replaced if she does get lazy or comfortable. Because women it. will replace a guy all the time that gets yeah. fat, lazy, poor, can't hold down a job, his health deteriorate. They'll get rid of a guy. All There's Easily. guys that have had fucking cancer and women will be like, I'm out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. So there has to be a, a, a standard that is maintained in that long term exactly. relationship. It's not a big ask. It's like, hey, you did these things early on. You're four, you're five, you're, you, you keep doing them. Keep doing them. Great. Cool. Great. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate it. Your right, channel's right. amazing. Appreciate Have a good day. It. All right. Uh, the call in link, uh, guys, again, is at the top of the YouTubes. If you have a question, you can hit that. Let's, uh, let's grab Wahlberger here. Let's see what he's got for us today. Hey, Rich, how are you? What's up, man? Hey, man, I uh, just wanted to, to state, you know, with GBD, genuine burning desire, I think the, the big thing to touch on is, is being genuine and uh, genuine in what you do. Like uh, pick something that you like and you enjoy. Like for me, it's basketball and go at it and be a leader in that thing. And the women will chase you in whatever environment it is. I don't give a shit what it is. Dungeons and Dragons, uh, art, I don't care whatever that thing is, mm -hmm. go do that thing that you enjoy the most and they will find you and then want to be part of that thing. And then guess what? If they go awry and they leave, you're still doing something that you want to do anyway. So it's not going to hurt so bad. Um, and believe me, I've been the bitch in the past. Women don't want you. Uh, they don't want you to make them your purpose. They want you to be doing something genuinely. Because I'm telling you, I made a woman my purpose, and it goes south. It goes south, I, I can, guarantee you. I can sum that person. up very eloquently by stating, a woman wants a man with a sparkle in his eye, but she doesn't want to be that sparkle. Yes, 100%. Let me give you a specific example in regards to how that worked for me. With basketball, I'm coaching now a group of, of kids. My son's involved, so that's great. And my lady is now looking to assist me in all that regard. So I did that for uh, seven months. Now that they want to run, like the parents who are involved in that want more. So now I've set up my own business doing this basketball uh, training sessions. And so last night I said, listen, I got to get this done. I got to get a jersey put together. And you know what she did? She went online and she said, oh, yes, let me find the jersey. Mm -hmm. She asked, what color do you want? What sizes? Um, what sort of logo, and then she's off looking to help. That's useful. That's useful. That's useful. Yeah. But that's all because I'm doing something that I like, that I enjoy, and I'm going after it hard. So there's no losing there. In the end, it serves me. It serves her as well as a side situation. But everybody wins. Go after something that you really like and enjoy, and they will fucking find you. They will find you. 100%. There you go. Thanks, man. Appreciate the, the Thanks, uh, share. Thanks, brother. What are you doing today, man? Looks like you're at work. What are you doing? Uh, I am actually working. So I'm at, um, <laughs> give you a look. I'm actually at a, this is set up at a gym. So I do some work early, come and work out, get a steam. Yeah. Then I set up my little spot here with my work. And uh, I'm around lots of people going after it physically. Oh, okay. It's just the environment that I like. Okay. No, it just looked like an interesting background. All right, man, we'll leave you at it. Thanks for popping in. Appreciate it. Take care, brother. Bro. All right. So we have, uh, we have a very comprehensive list in this video uh, of items that are important to acknowledge and remember and maintain when it comes to maintaining GBD and a long-term relationship or a marriage. If there is somebody that needs to see this video, it would be my honor if you would share it with them. So that helps me out with the algorithms. It's useful. If you haven't, again, read the Unplugged Alpha second edition, get a copy of it. It's on Amazon in print, Audible, uh, and hardback as well now. Uh, the audio version is perfect edit this time around. We've completely fixed that. Um, what's going on this week? We've got Moff doing a Moffis Hours tomorrow. We're going to do a general show on the weekend. 
We, of course, are doing Ladies Night on Monday night. So make sure that you're uh, tuned in and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for all the good stuff. Uh, and of course, um, make sure you check out the, uh, the podcast outro when we wrap up, visit the website and all the other good stuff to support the work. Thank you. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, the unplugged alpha community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt, and what you are doing right now, isn't paying off the balances, then visit total debt freedom ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months make sure you check out the top pinned comment on youtube for all the links mentioned during the 